directors and I'm from Portage, Wisconsin. And I have my other director partner with me, Kay. Yeah, and everyone uh, is uh, lucky they don't get to see me because I can't share my video. Um, my Zoom is part of the council Zoom and we've been in lockdown because I don't know if anyone else has experienced throughout this uh, COVID-19 period. We have been Zoom bombed a couple times, so we have a lot of controls on our um, Zoom. So it, you're either lucky or unlucky not to see me, <laughs> whichever way you want to think about it, but you don't get to see my face this morning. So this is Kay Smelik. I'm the city clerk of Des Moines, by the way, for those who don't know me. And welcome. And why don't we go around to our group and have everybody jump in and um, say hi, your name, where you're from. Can we start out with Diane's, the first one on my screen, Diane Dykstra? I'm Diana Dykstra. I'm from the village of McGuanago. And that's in Wisconsin. Oh, sorry. Yeah, correct. It's uh, in both Walworth and Waukesha counties in Wisconsin. Roxanne? I'm Roxanne Schneider. I am the retired city clerk from Dysert, Iowa. Um, and, but I'm still involved. I'm treasurer of the IIMC Foundation and I'm glad to be here with all of you. Marita? Hi, I'm Marita Rudy. I'm from the city of <laughs> Barrett, Minnesota. And I am the incoming IIMC Region 6 Director. Monica? I'm Monica Mohan. I'm from the city of Winona, Minnesota. Lois. Hi, Good I'm morning. Lois Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Lois Frank from Cambria, Wisconsin. Glad to see all of your smiling faces. Sherry? Hi, can you guys hear me? We can. Okay, good. I was trying to do without my headset and my computer doesn't like that. Um, Sherry Moore, City of St. Paul, Minnesota, and also on the IMC Foundation Board. Audra. Hi, Audra Etzel with the City of Otsego, Minnesota. Ms. Cassie. Hi, I'm Cassie and I'm the Institute Director for Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh, Beth Carlson from the city of Chatfield in Minnesota. And Chris. Hi, I'm Chris Lindquist with the city of Minnetrista, Minnesota. Mackenzie. Good morning, everyone. I am Mackenzie Reed Cotto with the city of Manitowoc, Wisconsin. Denise. Good morning, everybody. I am Denise Hoy and I'm with the city of Ankeny, Iowa. Yeah. Me? Yep. Okay. Hi, I'm Beverly Conrad with the city of Wayland, Iowa, and I'm the current president of IMFOA. Kelly? Kelly Freeling, um, city clerk for city of Iowa City. Laura? Laura Schaefer with the city of Carroll, Iowa. Linda? Linda Gordon. Maybe she stepped away from her phone. How about Melissa? Hi, I'm Melissa Blease from the village of Cambria in Wisconsin. And then we have a 262 number. So it's someone else from Wisconsin. Hit your star six to unmute. I think we have Linda back on the line. She's unmuted now. Maybe. Well, if they come on, they can just jump right in and say hi. Um, as you all know, it's been a rather interesting last year. 
in that end, probably um, like all the rest of us, um, we've had to change the way we've done things in our offices and it certainly oh, upset yeah. meetings and travel plans and all that other good stuff. So we just thought we'd try to get everybody together to um, just do a little um, meeting here and to try to catch up with friends and colleagues and a little bit of what's going on with IMC. Um, I can give you a few updates from the um, mid-year board meeting, um, which was in November in Grand Rapids. Um, I attended virtually, unfortunately, the day before a deer ran out and just kind of took my car out. So I was busy dealing with that, unable to travel to that meeting um, and did it virtually. Um, so as you all know, um, that a $5 increase in membership dues was approved. Um, virtual Athenian dialogues are gonna go through June of this year and they've been really well received. Um, I don't know if you've all had an opportunity to take part in one. It's different than in person, um, but certainly it's um, extended another education opportunity for members who might not have been able to do that. And likewise, all the education that's been virtual um, has really been very successful. The, um, the Director of Professional Development, um, we're looking at getting that in place for July of 2021. As you recall, Dr. Jane Lawn, her contract was not renewed last year. And so we're looking for a Director of Professional Development. Um, there is a, a policy, um, the policy committee has been directed to create a new policy regarding IMC employee recognition, um, basically for a length of service type um, recognition. And that was kind of um, sort of jump started because um, when a member departed and had been there a length of years, they were kind of in the middle of a policy. So trying to put that in writing so everybody is understanding what that is. Um, there's the policy committee was also directed to create a new process for holding our annual business meeting if the conference cannot be held in person. And then um, as you probably all have gotten a survey, um, their committee is, the education committee is looking at the Beyond MMC program in that and the survey went out just recently and they had over 800 members answer the survey and about 70% of people responding said, yes, they would like to pursue other professional designations beyond the MMC designation. A lot of times some um, people, if they get their MMC, their committee, community feels that, oh, they've, they've got their MMC now some communities don't feel the need to budget for education because they feel that um, they've got their credentials, even though that we all know that education and continuing education is so important just all the way around. And then um, obviously um, with COVID out there and the issues with COVID, um, options for the 2021 conference are you know, continuing to be managed. You know, that being said, um, the 2021 conference in Grand Rapids um, is still scheduled as an in-person conference. It's celebrating our 75th year. And that um, certainly right now it's a go. Um, you, you know, it's Michigan is the one who's going to be controlling it. Um, with whatever the rules are in Michigan or Grand Rapids at this point. Um, everything looks good. The hotel um, can do the social distancing, has taken all the precautions necessary to ensure a safe conference. But um, that being said, IMC is um, certainly evaluating because there's a lot of people whose communities prohibit them from out of state travel or even in state travel. I know mine does. In that, unless um, unless the vaccination comes to us soon, um, we have to get approval 
for non-essential out-of-state travel, which isn't too likely. And then if we did get it, we'd have to quarantine 14 days and we came back. And I know a lot of places are, you know, in the situation that they are prohibiting travel as well. So we'll wait and see, you know, um, what comes of that. Um, online programs, they continue to be really, really popular in that. And, um, you know, it's, it was a productive meeting in November, and I know the executive board met Friday in Grand Rapids. So more information probably will be coming about the meeting as we are going to have a board meeting, I believe, March 9th, right, Karen? I guess I could have turned the calendar. I believe so, yes. So that's uh, a little bit about um, what's going on um, in the IMC realm. Um, we, I don't know if anybody has any questions or comments. Okay, hearing none, um, there are board vacancies this year. Um, we have three vice president candidates, Marion Hess from Mississippi, P.D. Roosh from Illinois, and Letty from Texas. So there will be an election coming out soon. So make sure you look for that. Sometimes the emails go in your junk file. So um, IMC will send an announcement out. And so be on the lookout, I believe in the next month. And if you don't see anything, make sure you continue to check your junk email because you don't want to miss out on that. And then um, I will be going off at the end of May and Marita from Minnesota will be coming on. Um, <laughs> there we have, we have- um, Yay, I mean, Sherry was clapping, so let's clap, yay. Yeah. So <laughs> welcome. Um, I talked to Ann Eaker. Um, she is the treasurer for Region 6. She was going to get us a report as far as our bank balances and that. And I know she had her second COVID shot last week and near the end of the week. And she said she would be able to do it depending on how she felt. So I'm guessing she probably um, suffered the effects that other people are suffering from that second shot. But um, obviously with um, our treasurer's report, each state donates $500 annually to IMC and then $75 towards a silent auction gift. And the purchasing of the gift rotates between our three states and that and um, 2021 is Iowa's turn. So um, next we have the foundation update and Sherry and Roxanne. An interesting year for you guys too at the foundation. <laughs> yes, it, it has been. I, I, Sherry, you want me to start and then you yes. can jump in? Absolutely. Okay. Um, actually, the, the pandemic it did <clears throat> change our way of collecting money, but uh, we still did very well on our fundraising. Thanks in part to our, our wonderful partners, Municode and American Legal. They offered matching funds and our members stepped up and bought Hawaii raffle tickets and made donations. And so between those programs, we brought in over $50,000 for the foundation. So we really appreciate what Municode and American Legal did. Once you start, we get to start going to conferences again. If you see their representatives, please thank them for their support of the foundation because they do an awesome job. Um, as of the end of December, we had uh, about 3 million or a little over $3 million in restricted and unrestricted funds. And the interest income from those funds is used to, to provide scholarships. Um, we have the $400 CMC and MMC scholarships. I believe today's the deadline for filing for those. Um, and the $100 gym, tin and online scholarships, we had about 140 people apply for that last year. That uh, filing time is October, I believe, around the 1st of November. And 
So the foundation board, although the, the tenant endowment does not raise enough to fund all of those, the foundation board is using unrestricted funds to help cover those because particularly in this day and age with, with COVID, the online has been really important. Um, so we encourage all of you to watch your emails regarding the scholarships, the conference uh, scholarships. The, the money is there to be used and we, we like to see as much of it come to region six as we can. I also want to give, because she's on the call, I want to give a, a shout out to Kelly from Iowa City. She serves as the bookkeeper for the foundation and she's, she's amazing. And she's the one who really does all the heavy lifting. I have the treasure title, but she does the hard work. So I want to thank her and give her a shout out. So I guess I'll send it on to you, Sherry. Thanks, Roxanne. Um, yeah, this, this year is a little different. Um, right now, the plans are, as, as Marie was saying, for the conference to continue on. However, um, one of our big fundraisers at the conference is the silent auction. And we're not sure if that's gonna happen yet or not. Um, we have a foundation board meeting coming up later in, in March where we'll probably be talking about that. But um, with social distancing and the limit to the number of people that will be allowed in the exhibit hall at one time, um, we're probably gonna have to get creative and think up different fundraising ideas instead of the silent auction or a different way of doing the silent auction. So I would ask people to please put your thinking hats on. And if you know of any fundraising ideas that you think would be a good idea for our foundation, please let me know. Um, I'm open to, to any suggestions that you may have. Um, we're trying to think out of the box on some, some different things. And, and, and the more heads we have involved in this, the better chance we have of coming up with something that that we can still raise the same amount of money as we would if everyone was at the conference. Because even with the conference being held, it, it's still gonna be a smaller one. So we do need to think of fundraising sources outside. And with that being said though, don't stop buying your silent auction items. You know, when you see those sales come up, um, snatch them up and whether you use them this year or next year or, you know, one in later on, um, it's always good to find something when it's a good deal because then you get more credit when you, you're for your donation towards the foundation and the foundation gets more money. So I think it's a win-win. A I think that's all I've got, Roxanne, unless you think I'm missing something. No, I and, think that's it. And I think right now you guys have put out the announcement on the Hawaii raffle. And so yes, and actually, uh, I'm glad you brought that up, Marie, because we did bring that out and you can buy your tickets online. However, we've discovered an issue with our online payment system. And so I am working with our vendor for that to try to get that solved. I'm hoping by today or tomorrow, end of day or tomorrow, I'll have it done. But if you, if you go to buy a ticket, you're gonna be able to do it all. And then when you get to the payment page, it defaults to a dollar. And so if, if that's still happening, if you try to buy online, just give it a couple of days and, and come back and try again. But hopefully we'll have that problem solved here shortly. This is so, probably a good year to, to buy tickets too, because you know if there aren't as many people going to the conference, you might have a better chance. So maybe you can buy twice as many tickets as you normally would and you'd have a better chance of winning. Buy now, and then you, if you get to go to the conference, buy again, right? That's right. Um, and didn't the foundation, weren't you guys in the process of rolling out like giving levels or something? Yes, yes. we are. Um, we're Not actually, in the good detail, I just remember something. <laughs> yep, and the more will be coming out about that. We've changed the giving levels, um, kind of renamed them. Um, we still, and there'll be recognition for people who give 
like three years in a row, we're, we're trying to promote the consistent giving. And, you know, if everybody just remembers us on an annual basis, um, you know, they don't have to be big donations. Sometimes people think, oh, I don't have a lot of money to give. They don't have to be. Those, those $25 and $50 donations are just as important as those vendors that are able to give several thousand dollars. So we just encourage you to, to try to remember us throughout the year. Um, you can pay online, you can send, send a, a check to me if you wanna make a donation. Um, we're trying to make it easy, but yes, Marie, you're correct. We are gonna be updating our, our giving levels for this year changing changing some names and the the range of the dollar values okay so something to watch for and i think it was you roxanne that said if you put away a couple dollars you know every week or so it's not much but it does really add up yes it does yeah maybe you know since you're not going out as much maybe that coffee that you would buy every week or that glass of wine or something like that, you know, put it towards this instead. All right. Thank you, ladies. And then um, Roxanne kind of touched on the scholarship information. Um, we did not have anybody apply for the 2021 conference scholarship from our region. So keep that in mind for next year. Um, and then the, um, the deadline I think is today for those CMC and MMC scholarships. And also we have the annual awards, the Quill Award and the Program Excellence in Government Award as well for the um, conference. Um, under the state association updates, um, we have our presidents here, I believe. Beverly, do you wanna start out with Iowa's? Sure, I can do that. I had um, we ha only have canceled one of our conferences so far out of the last three. So we're hoping our one in April still remains in person, and that looks like it's going to. Um, so we did cancel our 2020 spring conference, and we held the fall conference in person with limited capacity. Um, we provided face mask, and um, because we didn't have anything in our bylaws regarding electronic meetings, uh, we are working on that now. Uh, because uh, we remained the same slate of officers for uh, two years in a row, just simply because we didn't have anything in place to uh, have an annual meeting if we weren't in person. Um, we extended our certification and renewals for four years because it was harder to get credits, obviously, because we weren't able to meet in person. And we are limiting the um, amount of classes that you can take, or not the amount of classes, but the um, places where credits are available for your certifications and renewals um, just to assure attendance is monitored and testing is conducted throughout the training. Um, we know how valuable our certifications are. We want to make sure that they are, um, I'm trying to think of the word I want to use. Denise, what is the word we want to use? Um, that they are, um, huh. I can't think of it, but we want to make sure that we're we're making sure that um, certifications are get it, given properly, getting properly. Um, we also have a pop-up sales store uh, for IMFOA items, and that's been going well. And we're using that to fund scholarships. So I don't know if that's something IMC has ever done, but maybe they want to do a pop-up store to sell things and make money that way for different things. Um, our next conference is April twenty-first through the twenty-second to the twenty-third. And it is in person in Des Moines again, um, and it is limited capacity still as well. But we're already sold out. Um, in one week, we were at high capacity. So um, usually the cancellations will fill up the wait list, and, and uh, we're looking forward to having that. We have 224 signed up so far. Um, and then the Municipal Professionals Institute, I'm sure a lot of you know, that's transferred to a, a three-block hybrid training. So two of the uh, sessions in February and October are online, and then there is an in-person in Ames in July. And so the Academy remains in person in July also, but they had a successful virtual um, conference in July of this last year. And uh, we do appreciate Kay 
uh, being the representative for Iowa as well for Region 6. So we've had a good year, a lot of transitions, and we've learned a lot, and uh, we look forward to the year ahead. Thank you, Beverly. You're welcome. Um, next is Linda. I don't see Linda on the line from Minnesota. Oh, there you are, Linda. Good morning. You're on mute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Uh, I don't have a lot to report. We canceled everything last year, um, but this year we are doing a half in-person, half virtual annual meeting since we have to have it in either March, April, or uh, May. Um, we are having our annual meeting on March 18th. And if you can show up, if you want to be there in person, you can go to Rockville City Hall. Otherwise, we will have a Zoom meeting set up. Um, our institute, the last week of April, first week of May is all virtual. And we moved our March conference to June to do it in person. Um, it was great. I got to go to Iowa's conference last fall and learned a lot. <laughs> so we have a lot of ideas on how to set things up. Um, we know there'll still be a mask mandate in place and we have a health sponsor who is going to get us masks that have MCFOA on them. So, um, and then hopefully in the fall when we have academy, we can do that in person also. So, Canceling our conference last March was um, really hard to do, but all of our speakers, our entertainment and everything, everybody rebooked for the same time for this June. So we haven't had to even plan hardly a new conference. So we, we haven't had any planning meetings for this year for this conference because everything is going to be the conference we didn't have before. Um, otherwise, I don't really have a lot. I'm just really hoping, hoping to get back to normal. And we're, we got our fingers crossed that, that we're going to be able, even if we have to limit our numbers, to have an in-person conference in June. Thanks, Linda. 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 Yeah. And, but the theme has changed. We did change the theme for this next year, or for June. It's your theme, not my theme. Correct. Okay. Correct, but we have all the same speakers, the same entertainment, right. everything. So yes, and it actually would be technically, not even my conference. It technically it would be Marty's, our our vice president right now, because he will be president come March, or come the eighteenth of March. So Marty has then graciously offered to share. The entire conference with Chris and I, since neither one of us got a conference in our presidency. So there'll be there'll be a lot of new, different ways we're doing things this year. Thank you, Linda. Um, Wisconsin, um, our association president Wendy um, was unable to be with us this morning. Um, I can tell you that. Like everybody else, Wisconsin canceled um, their conference last year and basically all training, unfortunately, um, shut down as well. There are plans currently yet to hold our annual conference in August in Brookfield. And um, Wendy has kind of done a joint thing too since um, our previous president didn't have her conference try to combine things. Um, we're hoping that conference still pulls off um, We'll have to just kind of wait and see. Um, otherwise, Wisconsin um, has been going through, obviously, election fatigue, I think, like all the rest of you. And um, right now, I think all of us are getting ready for our spring election. We had a primary election in February, and we're sorting through the stack of new election bills that um, the state legislature has put out to fix what wasn't broken in November. So um, we're kind of 
shuffling through those, um, kind of hoping, um, working on trying to get um, absentee voting to be able to get those pro votes processed ahead of time. Um, we've tried it. I can't hear you. Oh, pardon me. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, we are this association is trying to get the um, absentee voting bill through, which would allow us to process absentee votes ahead of election day. Um, we've tried for, I don't know, ladies, like three or four years, haven't we? And it's gone nowhere. Um, we're giving it another try to see if we can't um, get the process um, through. We'll wait and see. Otherwise, like you guys, we're finding new ways to do things and hoping that everybody has stayed safe, continues to stay safe, and we soon get out of this so we can come to see everybody in person. Um, as far as education director updates, um, we can tell you all the institutes did file their annual reports with IMC and are in compliance. So that is great news. And do we have Iowa's institute director on the line? It doesn't look like we do, Marie. Okay, Sarah's thank you. Sarah's not here. Okay. How about Minnesota? Nope. Okay, we'll go to Cassie. I think by now I'd remember that mute and I do it all the time. Um, we will again be offering our Institute virtual. Um, we had to in July last year and we didn't want to take the chance this year. Hotels aren't flexible anymore. And because of that, even though the vaccines are going out, there's no assurance that um, it'll be safe in July. And if we have to do the, the spacing and stuff like that, we have over 350 people that come to ours. And, the, and I don't have a facility that could even space people far enough apart that we could even do it. And with all of the breakouts that I do, sometimes we run eight at once. It's really hard to find a place that even can house us. So um, I had to make the switch to the flip. I had a, I, it, I made up my mind in November because it was so bad at that point. So we will again be doing that. Next year we're restructuring and I don't know what that's gonna be like. I'm thinking part of it will be live. Part of it will be um, online. We're gonna to try to shorten it so that they don't spend four and a half days at our place in a hotel. I think budgets are getting um, much more difficult and they won't be able to afford it probably. So um, I'm gonna be offering a lot more in a different format. And like I said, I really don't know what that's gonna be looking at. One of the things we've started to do and it's been very popular with our Master Academy, the one we just got done last week with is badging. And we offered for those that came if they, um, if they attended all two and a half days and also did the extra work in four classes, we had them do strategic plans, action plans and all kinds of stuff that they would get a, a badge in governance. Um, I'm also gonna be offering something in May. It's navigating the return to normal. That should be really cool. That one will we'll be offering a badge in sensitivity and um, conflict training. And I'm really excited about that as well. And then in the fall, domestic terrorism. I think that that's a big deal. I think it's one of the biggest threats in everything I read, the government itself as well as citizens. And I'm hoping to get a really neat line up there. It'll be Master Academy approved, CMC approved. And I haven't got a date for it, but I've just started um, doing that. My Master Academy in the future will always be um, virtual. 
we don't get enough people at our regular one that it's that it's worthwhile doing in, in the live format. So that one's going to be virtual. What I like about it is it gives everybody a chance. We um, Minnesota's been helping us um, advertise, and then IIMC has been doing that. And that makes it worthwhile. And I tell you, the experience that people have had, you can ask the people from your state that went. I don't think we had anybody from Iowa. but well, we had some really big cities there. Um, Sacramento, all over the place, 27 states were there and Canada. And I will tell you, the learning that you get is so great because we do the breakouts, we do the polling, we do, do jam boards in our in our classes, we do a bunch of cool stuff and we try to make it as, as live as possible if you were there. And they learn so much from each other and I'm really excited about our evals. We've already seen a lot of them. So I hope if someday you want some hours, take a look at what we're offering because um, I think we do a really good job with it. And that's all I have to report. Cassie? Do you yeah. um, intend to continue something with elections? Yes, I do that every year. So I'll be doing something on the government on the governor's election, which is different laws than the president. Okay, thank you, Cassie. Yeah. And then, um, of course, the 2021 conferences in Grand Rapids. Um, Try to get a feel from those on the line. Are people going? Are you allowed to go? I'm Some going. nodding ahead. Yeah. Wisconsin is saying no. I see Lois shaking her head no too. Yeah. Depends on the vaccination. Yeah. Bring it on, right? <laughs> yes, I'm going. Good for you. Uh I have my room booked, but it all depends. Yeah. Yep. I think we all have our fingers crossed that, um, you know, the vaccinations will be out to us and we will um, be able to attend. Um, next year, um, the mid-year meeting is Wisconsin's turn. Hard to think about next winter already in that, but, um, Usually, generally we meet in January and we have, it's the worst weather week of the year, right guys? And we have been doing Athenians lately and then having our business meeting. So um, something that um, we'll have to be looking at here coming up um, in the next few months. There's in 2023, looking ahead that in a few years where it, the world's going to be all smiling again. We have our annual conference in Minneapolis. So I don't know if our any of our Minnesota friends want to give us a little update. Have has much been done on that, or you're getting excited? Not excited at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've gotten some people who volunteered for committees. We have well. Chris uh, Shelby is setting up a Zoom meeting to talk to all of us and the people who volunteered for some committees. Um, this kind of just got dropped in our laps. So we haven't really done anything. I've been trying to reach out to uh, the St. Louis clerk and she got back to me before Christmas, but ever since then she hasn't gotten back to me again as to as for some help as to how to how to set things up. So I do have some volunteers for committees. Um, we'll be sending out more volunteers, uh, requests for volunteers. So hopefully once the time gets closer, we will be asking Wisconsin and Iowa for some help um, for on-site volunteers at that time. But we really, we don't have a lot a lot planned or anything yet. Okay, well, we'll all be watching for that and um, 
be willing to lend a hand to our friends in Minnesota as the time gets closer. Um, as far as other business, um, I don't know what you have, Kay. Um, I think we want to encourage everybody, if you have not joined or been involved with IMC, as far as even on the committee level, um, there's an application on IMC's website. And I know that the committees are not all filled up. So feel free to go online and fill out an application and submit that. Um, most of the committee work is done via teleconference or Zoom a few times a year. Um, you know, the virtual education, keep your eye on that. Um, there's been a lot of good offerings that's listed on the IMC website in that. And um, we want to applaud IMC's staff for being there for us, even though they've been remoting, working remotely and now just sort of shuffling back to the office ever so slow. What did I leave out, Kay? You don't hear anything from Kay. Does anyone else have anything? We really hope next um, year for the mid-year meeting to get back to an in-person meeting. Zoom's great, but everybody probably has the Zoom fatigue that we're all experiencing. And it's, it's just not the same as networking live and in person. Marie, this is Karen. Um, I just wanna make sure that you see the very lovely thank you in the chat uh, for serving as Region 6 Director. Um, it's been an honor. And when you have such great colleagues through the three states, you know, it's been fun and um, I consider all everybody that I've met along the way as a friend and can't wait to see you hopefully in May. If not soon, I usually join my Minnesota friends for Athenians and I've been missing those. You guys probably have two and that, but um, yeah, it's everybody should get involved with IMC. I mean, your state associations are great and wonderful. IMC is just a whole different level of offering. And Linda, I hope if I can go to the conference in May, I hope to get up to Minnesota in June. I hope so. <laughs> so if no one has anything else, um, we want to um, encourage you, if you ever have any questions or that, um, to give a contact um, and shoot us an email. Marita will do a great job. Kay will do a great job. And hopefully we'll get this world, at least our world's a little more normal that we can um, continue on with our networking. Thank you everybody for joining us this morning. Have a great day, stay safe. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Bye now. Bye.